Hello, uh, my name is Eric Boyo. I'm from France. I uh, work for a company named uh, Machina Corpus. And uh, this presentation about um, having a nice map. Um, it's important because, um, well, there are several ways to build maps in Plon or any website-based uh, system. But um, in some cases, you really need a nice map. You really need something fancy, something sexy. And most part of the time, uh, before, um, at some point, your customer just say, OK, let's forget about this stuff and let's put just an image or maybe a flash and going to be much better for me than your big stuff. And here, I want to show how you can build nice maps with, well, let's say, real web stuff. Um, I just tell you, there are going to be some demos, okay, not just slides. So that's because I, I love risk. Be aware of that. Okay, so what is a map? Um, a map, first of all, a map is a piece of information. This is a map map from my newspaper uh, from the last month. Uh, that's a very nice map, a lot of information on it. That's a piece of information, OK? Well, when we are on, on web and not on a newspaper, you might consider that user interaction can be useful. So this is Google Map. You have a marker. You click. You get some information about it. You get extra links and so on. That's user interaction. OK, that's fair. We need that. Of course we do. But. We don't need that. We don't need an application. We don't need many buttons all over. Uh, this is uh, a system uh, which allows basically to build a map, not actually to read a map. And your visitors are not map experts, as they are not a geographic uh, expert or something. They just want to see an information, to have information about something which is maybe supported by a map. This is bad for your visitor, probably useful for you if you're an expert, an expert, but not for regular users, OK? But that's pretty much what we are providing using the regular um, GIS uh, ecosystem right now. So my way to create a map is quite simple. Keep it simple, make it nice and efficient by itself, and do not expect, expect a bunch of gadgets and buttons and stuff will make it any clearer or better, OK? A map must be just fine by itself. That's the thing. So now what? Um, as a plan developer, what were your options so far? Um, first of all, open layers. Open layers is a JavaScript library, which is open source. And it's um, provided for now by Collective Geo packages. Uh, which is wonderful. Uh, the Collective Geo package is uh, done by uh, Giorgio Borelli, and that's really nice work. Open layers used to be integrated in other products before that, uh, but that's, that's the best one, OK? Uh, so you have Open Layers, and you also have Google Maps API, uh, which is provided by products.maps uh, package, which is good as well. Um, so that's what you can use, of course, but I do have kind of problem with those two solutions. Um, first of all, open layers. Open layers is a JavaScript library that has been existing for a long time now. And uh, it has been built and imagined by GIS experts, or ge geographical information system experts, for themselves, not for basic users. Um, it's providing a very, very large set of features. That's wonderful, OK? But it's about one mega of JavaScript. So that's, that's bad, OK? Um, plus, it does not really work very nicely on mobile device, which is kind of a problem now. Um, and uh, well, for sure, it supports all the OGC standards, all the protocols, all official protocols that you might maybe know, like uh, WMS, WFS, which are known as WS services, which are web services um, corresponding to huge specifications. Uh, let me explain you what uh, WS services are about. Um, when you try to build a map with open layers and get your map from a WS server somewhere, you have this kind of dialogue. This is all in XML, really fat XML. So you have 
Uh, hello, I want, um, I want to know what you provide as service. Uh, well, I have this list of map. Okay, I would like this map. Okay, very good, I can provide it to you. What would you like as a projection? Because there are a lot of different projections for different uh, map contexts and so on. Okay, I have this very nice projection from whatever, let's say, Kazakhstan or something. Okay, good. Uh, I would like uh, this tile, this uh, small tile, this square, from this position, exactly, to this position. Okay, and which format? And then it's continue talking about a lot of things, um, really, really long discussion, and at some point, at the end, yeah, you get your tile, your piece of map, okay? That's, that's terrible. It wastes uh, time, it wastes resources, it makes a library which use that very fast. Okay, so why? Why did we do that that way? Uh, because it improves interoperability. That's the thing. Uh, it means WMS, WFS are standards. It means that you can have uh, a client, uh, uh, art client like QGIS, for instance, using this, or you can have an, another external server able to use this, so it's interoperable. Okay. Um, interoperability is good as it does not impact too much operability. That's what I think. Okay. Um, and really, this big dialogue in XML is not how web should work. Work uh, to, to work fine in web, you do something like that. Okay? That's a way to get an image. You have an image with an URL. Well, you have X, Y to get the position. You get the map. No dialogue at all. Okay? You want to display an image. We do know how to do that with web for a long, long time. <laughs> that way. Nothing more. That's enough. So that's basically what uh, does not do WS services. So, so that's, I propose let's occupy WS. Occupy WS could be a quite successful um, movement, I think. So that's my problem with open layer. Now, what about Google Maps? Uh, Google Maps is wonderful. Uh, it looks good. It's fast, so fast. I mean, okay. Um, and Google Maps was a really big revolution regarding web mapping. Before Google Maps, the people had no idea that you could find an address with a single text entry. You had to enter the street name, the street number, the city, the country, and are you sure it's this, this street or this one? Just before having any result, you had a lot of questions, and then you might have well, a result. With Google, you have just your big search button, search entry, you type in whatever you want, the name of your hotel, a pizzeria, a string number, whatever, and it's gonna show you the result on the map. So that's something great. So thanks you Google for that. But Google Maps, Google Maps is so boring. I mean, everybody has the same map. There are only three styles. So you have the map, the, the, the satellite, and the terrain. Uh, come on. Uh, Everybody has the same. The markers are all the same. So you can work a little bit on it. You can style it a little bit. But nobody does that. Nobody does. Everybody uses Google Maps the way it is. So everybody has the same one. And that's, that's a pity, basically. So um, plus, plus, sorry, I forget that. Google Maps has many usage restrictions. So that's not only those, there are a lot of, of them, and they are changing every month. So you have to be careful with your customers. Uh, it does not allow offline mode. So if you want, for instance, to download the tiles from Google and use it locally on your computer, or maybe on your, uh, on your uh, mobile phone when you're offline, this is not allowed. I mean, it's allowed, but you have to pay a commercial license. You cannot uh, perform massive geocoding. You cannot have a non-public usage. So if you're putting a Google map into your intranet, that's not authorized. Uh, you cannot have a commercial user usage, and so on. There are a lot of restrictions. So, not the ideal solution. There are new hopes. Uh, there are new libraries comparable to open layers, but smaller, much faster, and much easier to use. Okay? And their orientation is just to have no backend server, no G server to provide. WMS or WFS services, just tiles, which can be okay served by a G server if you need, but they can be just images you have on the folder and 
and sent by, a, by, a, by any web server. And you use CSS to make it nice. That's a web approach, OK? That's good. So what are those libraries? First, uh, you have Modest Map. Modest Maps is very small, 40 kilos. If you take the size uh, uh, when it's zipped, it's probably smaller than uh, your uh, company logo on your website. So that's really, really small. It's mobile compliant, and it does support all browsers, like IE6. Well, we don't mind, but OK, it does. Um, so that's a really nice thing. It does not offer much interaction, almost none, uh, but it's perfect with, to, to build mini maps if you want to just have a small map in a corner uh, which is related to your content. It's just perfect. Plus, it is very, very easy to integrate with uh, an extra library, which is htmapl.js, which interprets just a markup and turns it into a map. So you have this markup. You use a class map. You, you set the center, the position, latitude and longitude, the zoom, and you get your map. Basically, that's it. Let me show you a demo. That's where it kind of broke. Okay. Um, so uh, I have my plan site here, and I've built, uh, I have built a very simple uh, template to put a map. That's it. Uh, so that's our name. You see, uh, colors are not fantastic, sorry, uh, but that's a kind of um, midnight rendering. Here is my provider, CloudMed. Uh, CloudMed is, um, is a provider of, uh, of nice uh, map styles, and I use the style name Midnight. Well, I had, um, I had a, a div with a link to make a marker, so I can click and, and uh, put a link on my map, uh, plus uh, zoom in and zoom out buttons. That's pretty much it. Not much. No JavaScript here. Just that, and it works. So you can probably just edit that in uh, TinyMC if you want. Why not? I did it with a, with a, a page template, but it could be done with TinyMC as far as you authorize uh, the different attributes you need. And you're done. So that's quite a nice way to, to, to display a map. And it's fully working. You can, you can pan. You can zoom in, zoom out, etc. OK, I don't get all the types because it's, the, the network is not that good here. But uh, that's just perfect if you want a very nice and small map. OK? Um, what's next? Sorry. Uh, polymaps. Uh, so polymaps is very small too, 32 kilos, very fast. And it's using uh, GeoJSON format, which is a JSON format uh, specific to, uh, to uh, geometry. So you can describe a geometry uh, in a JSON format plus extra attribute. It's totally open. It's not constrained by your, a, a big spec. You can do whatever you want with GeoJSON as far as you provide a geometry in it. And it's using SVG for rendering. Uh, so there is um, a module which integrate polymaps in, um, in Plone, which is collective geo polymaps which have been done by Christian Lederman. Christian is here. Thank you, Christian. Nice, nice thing. Um, and uh, well, it's quite straightforward to, to customize. And everything is styled with, uh, with CSS. So you can do things like that with polymaps. That's pretty much a, a collection of plain contents, which does have a, um, a location. And you can display it with a map that way, OK? Having a pop-up with information and so on. So that's what, and you can have points, you can have um, polygons and so on. So that's really easy to use. Uh, it does work with Collective Geo. I mean, you, you are connected to the entire ecosystem of Collective Geo, which is really rich. So you can Geo reference any content, but you will have uh, a presentation by, uh, by Giorgio about that. So um, Giorgio is not here, is he? No. Um, so I, I don't speak much about uh, Collective Geo. Uh, another one is Cartograph. So Cartograph is, is uh, using pure SVG rendering. And it's quite a nice approach because there are two sides in Cartograph. You have the server part, cartograph.py. It's not server, but let's say standalone part, which is able to convert any standard GIS resource uh, into SVG. Uh, so you can have a shapefile. You can have 
a WMS uh, external server, you can have um, a POSGIS database, this kind of stuff, and it turns it into a huge, big SV, uh, SVG content that you can skin. And cartograph.js is the, the tool able to put it on, online and style it. So um, I've made a very small and basic integration of uh, cartograph with dexterity, where you can enter, you have a field to describe your CSS, another one to put your JavaScript, and the last one to provide the SVG file produced by cartograph.py, and you get something quite nice. Where is it? Here. So I took the, the cartograph example for Italia. Yeah, that's what you get. And see, there is a boat, and it moves. That's, I like that, okay? Yeah. And, and look at the, at the fonts, they are really gorgeous. Everything is nice. You have the reticulum, see, the, the, you have the feeling that it's, it's actually 3D, okay? That's a 3D rendering of a flat uh, original uh, geosource information. So it has been converted into 3D. It's very, very nice. You have some effect on the border, and you do that only with CSS. Okay, that's, CSS is okay for us. We are not expert in GIS system with all their vocabulary and, and, uh, and tools and so on. We love CSS and we love having a little boat going from Napoli to <laughs> Palamo. This kind of stuff we want to show to our, our customers, okay? Um, So that's my screenshot. Yeah, I've made some screenshot in just in case my demo is dead. Um, and that one, Leaflet. So Leaflet is my favorite. Uh, it's a little bigger, but only 90 kilos. So that's that's pretty fair. It's fast. It's mobile compliant. Uh, it does support all browser somehow, and it's really complete. It offers a large set of, uh, of feature. Um, it have a very simple API. It uses a lot of GeoJSON, which is cool because it's really easy to produce GeoJSON from any plan backend. And it's a very active project. There are a lot of plugins. Uh, you have an editor toolbar, for instance. You have the ability to integrate Google layers if you want. You can manage different projections and so on. So it makes it a quite nice tool if you want to move from open layer to something, let's say, better. You will be quite uh, quite happy with the feature it, it offers compared to the other ones which are much simpler, okay? which are okay if you want to do something really simple. But with Leaflet, you have something uh, probably richer. Um, so, demo, yeah, let's go. So, bye bye, little boat. And let's get here. So, first, a really simple integration. Um, so here again is just a template I've made in the ZDMI manually. Uh, here is a code. Uh, I don't know if you can read it comfortably. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, okay. So you have a JavaScript which instantiates a new map with such and such position, such zoom, and you deca declare a tile layer targeting an external provide tile, which is here a uh, map box, and uh, basically that's it, you have this map. So now let's change it a little bit. I go to my template uh, and I just add a few more stuff, which is already prepared prepare because I'm not entirely mad. So to my ma existing map, I'm going to add a marker, so this is how you create a marker. I uh, will bind a small pop-up to say, hey, this conference is here. I will draw a circle plus a polygon. And I'm going to decide that the polygon is going to be editable. OK? That's pretty much it. And here we go. OK? So that's my circle, my marker, and um, my editable Polygon, see? So that's quite nice uh, with 
few lines of JavaScript. Okay, that's JavaScript. You have to learn about the API, but it's quite it's quite simple compared to what you have to do with uh, open layers and the documentation. Documentation of open layers is really rich, but not that friendly. Uh, with uh, with Leaflet, you can do that in few minutes. Okay, so that was a simple integration example. Um, another kind of funny one. Let me zoom back. I put Plone on a map. So I took Leaflet and put it on the background. So I have Plone, my lab website, and I have a map. I can zoom. That's just my background, OK? So I'm not sure it's really useful, but um, <laughs> it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. So you, you might imagine to script the, the position of the map according to the content. So when you open a new content where you do have a city which is mentioned or something, you're going to nicely move to that position. For instance, why not? I mean, it could, be, it could be fun. So that's what you can do really easily. Here is a code for just CSS. I put my map on position uh, fixed, top 0, left 0, z index 1. You're done. OK? Um, probably not easy to do that with Google Maps, I think. Uh, what else? Um, well, you we can use leaflets, not necessarily for maps. Uh, that's kind of fun. Maybe you know about uh, XKCD um, stuff. So one of the last one was um, an infinite world in a bubble. And this has been mapped into a leaflet. So you can go into this world, which is really nice, with a lot of characters and, and stuff. That's a leaflet map, OK? Because a leaflet is just managing images. OK, that's web. You have images, some squares, which are 256 pixels large, and you put them together. And when you zoom in, you break them into smaller ones. That's the way it works. You can manage a lot of things with that, not necessarily real maps. This is a map, but not a real country. Or maybe it is, but uh, anyway. Um, so that's kind of cool, too. What else? Um, yeah, let me show you uh, how Leaflet is integrated into Plomino, because I'm also doing the Plomino project. Just a really small and rapid example. Uh, let's go back on the route. I'm going to make um, a new Plomino application to manage um, my neighbors, for instance. So I create a new form for that. Um, And I'm going to add a um, few fields in there. First of all, um, the neighbors are like. One I don't. And where they are. OK, I turn them into fields. With Pomino, it's quite quick to do. And so those are two text fields. And this one's going to be a leaflet map, because you do have a leaflet type in Plomino. And I save. That's it. And that's my form. I can declare neighbor I like. Eric, good guy. And let's see, Bob, whoever. And I can put them on my map. So this is a OpenStreetMap map, which is not really nice. But anyway, we use it. So I'm going to put some points, maybe a line, 
or whatever. You edit it directly. It does work on mobiles. OK. And when you're happy with it, you just save. And it's saved, OK? It's saved as a JSON content into your, your Promino documents. If you're not entirely happy about the look of OpenStreetMap, which is really bad, uh, we can change it quite easily. Um, let's find something fancy. Um, I, I love the watercolor. From Stallman, Stallman, where are they? Sorry, Stallman. Watercolor, that one. So Stallman is providing some some maps really nice, like that one, which is watercolor rendering. You know, with effects, uh, just like if you have painted uh, manually. I, I love that. Uh, I think that San Francisco. I'm not sure. Actually, you cannot know where you are with this map. But it's looking very good, OK? So I love this map. Let's, let's use it. So I copy the real of any tile of it. It gives me the pattern. And I'm going to put that into my field parameter in Plomino. So here is the pattern I'm using for now. So OpenStreetMap. So here is basically it's. Um, Zoom level, latitude, longitude. Well, let's use that one instead. So give me a second. Okay, let's see. Okay. And save. And we don't. So it might be slow because the tiles are not necessarily available at all zoom level immediately, but it should work at the end. So let's wait. So the network is not that good, so I have prepared some screenshot for everything. Uh, please. Maybe. Oh, yes, it's coming. OK, and you get your map with this uh, very fancy background. That's simple, isn't it? And it's quite nice. Um, so that's what you can do with, with Premiere. It's what, just an example because, of course, I love Leaflet and everything. I love something. Every time I love something, I think uh, it must be into Plumino. So I'm kind of a maniac with that. Um, so that's not necessarily what you're going to use to make maps, but be aware that integrating that is really easy. Um, now, what? Um, Yes, I will show you a real example I've built with uh, Leaflet. That one, that's a trekking application. So you can, you can look for a trek uh, somewhere in France, and you, you can filter them. So that's dynamic. You can get according search or search criteria, if it's a long trip or not, if you're going with a family or if it's uh, more sport stuff. Then you can find some tracks. You can have information about it, images, and so on. It's all done with leaflet, OK? It's, you can, there are a lot of features. See, it's quite rich interface. Uh, it's connected to Meteo, um, uh, weather report, weather forecast. Dynamically, you can find your destination with completion here. For instance, you look for something, uh, let's say, in uh, Valbonne. You can pick it. I'm not sure it will load the tiles because the network is really bad, but let's try. No, it does not. Oh, it does. And you get the weather forecast for, for this place in France, which is really nice, by the way. And um, see the, here, there are several layers. You have um, the land plus the towns and also the, um, the relief uh, layers, the levels. It's quite nice. Uh, quite nice uh, thing compared to what you have with uh, Google, for instance. It's, it's quite, um, yeah, nice, nice one. Okay, that's an example of what you can do. The interac interaction here is only JavaScript, so I have, as a backend, I have Plumino database, but could have been done with anything else. I just produce JSON, and it sends me the track. I can put it on the map, and uh, 
that's basically it. If I go back to where are a few examples. Come on. Yes. Okay. This is all JSON pushed by my backend server. My, my, it's, it's, a, it's a Promino database, but it could have been uh, archetypes or dexterity based. That's really easy. You just expose a view, providing JSON, and that's it. That's it. No, no big servers uh, like uh, Poggi's database kind of stuff in order to find where are the stuff, how do you project them. It's just web stuff. Okay? Little JavaScript, little CSS, JSON, and you're done. Okay, that's the thing. So, um, now let's switch back to the presentation, if you don't mind. So, let's pass screenshots. Okay, now what about the data? Have you you've seen that I've been using different sources? Um, OpenStreetMap is one of them, but also fancy ones like from Staman or, or Mapbox uh, or CloudMade. Um, what can you use as a base layer? Of course, you can use Google Maps, but such a cliche. I mean, uh, you can use OpenStreetMap, but it doesn't look really, really good. You can use other sources, but they are not for free most part of the time. What can you do with OSM? Actually, OSM is not a map. OpenStreetMap is not a map. OpenStreetMap is a database, okay? As a map, it sucks, okay? It's really bad. It does not look good, but just because it's putting all the information contained into OpenStreetMap into a map. That's what we need to maintain the system, to maintain OpenStreetMap. By the way, we, you, you know OpenStreetMap. It's, it's a free database built uh, on a wiki mode. You can edit any attribute of your country, of any part of the world, by the way. You can fix streets. You can fix uh, names, position, and so on, and that's built by the community. So it's maintained by the community, and it's an anonymous database with lot, lot, lot of attributes. And this database can be used to produce your own maps, maps you're going to sell yourself. How do you do that? Well, you can use a studio, which is named TileMill, which is um, a Node.js system, and it allows to use some sources like Shape files. So you can extract some shape files from OSM, or you can extract it and put it into a Postgre database or something like that. And then you can work on it in a CSS way into your studio. And then, using this style you have built, you can produce tiles. So the, the rendering mechanism behind uh, Tile Mill is um, Mapnik. And once you have defined your styles with a very simple to use studio. You have a Mapnik style that can be used by stuff like Landes or MBUtil, which produce the actual tiles. So images, okay? A folder with images. Let me show you a short demo. Um, so it's running as, a, as an app, but it's actually web-based, okay? Uh, where is it? Um, not loading. Okay. So that's one of the styles. I oh come on, it's slow. Please. Okay. So that's um, a map which is just like a book. There is you see, here. You you see it have been fold, paper fold here, and it just look like your uh, your geographic book when you were a child. Okay. It's quite nice. Okay. With this, so it it has been produced by um, kind of uh, less like mechanism. You know less less CSS. So MSS is the same, but for maps, you can you can have variables, you can have uh, inheritance, you can make some mixins and so on. So here is how it works. You define uh, that lake's going to be that big, uh, for, for such zoom and such scale, you're going to have such and such uh, parameters for rendering lakes, for rendering rivers, etc. So it can be quite a big job, okay, it is, but you can just copy an existing one and adapt it if you want. That's what I'm going to show you. Um, so with 
this tile, I have produced some tiles um, somewhere. Uh, let me find it back. My box. Here are my current styles. So that's the zoom levels. Then X, Y. Okay. Off. Oh, sorry. Uh, anyway, you have you have PNG files here, and that's the folder structure with files. I'm gonna serve that with a small HTTP server. Um, um, simple server, gonna be fair enough. And now let's switch back. So here I've made a small template. We do use my local tiles, okay? So it's much quicker, as you can see. Uh, here is the pattern, localhost, my port, my style, style um, ID, and then zoom x, y, that's it. And you got this, okay? Uh, now I want to change that. I want to change that uh, because I don't like the C. The C is not really cool that way. I prefer pink C. So let's fix the color of the water yeah, here. I make it pink. Pink is nice. I save. Okay, looks good. Um, so, uh, by the way, I don't see color uh, correctly. My eyes are, uh, okay. but anyway. Um, so, I gonna produce my tiles. Time is it? It's okay. Um, so it has been saved in a file. Uh, it, no, I export them. So I export my current style as an MB tile file. So MB tile is basically a small um, SQL database, um, SQL Lite database containing all the, the the images basically. So I choose the zoom level I want to export. If you go very, f very large, you're going to have a huge export, one terabyte, okay? So I don't do that. Uh, yes, from zoom one to five, is, it's enough. Uh, I can reduce the area. Of course, you might have a client customer who is working on, uh, I don't know, uh, the Arnhem area, so you can produce a lot of zoom level. If it's a small area, you will not have such a big amount, but for the entire world, you, you need kind of big server, okay? Uh, so export, processing. So meanwhile, I'm gonna move my old side somewhere else. Move, style three to old, style three. Okay, it's done, so that's my MB tile file. So I use MB util. So that's three B MB tiles. It exports the tiles. Okay, I'm done. So now I can go back. No, not here. Here. And refresh. I got my pink C. Okay. So using this, you can produce really, really nice maps for your customer using the color you want, the rendering you want. You can, of course, decide if you want to display Morocco and Rabat, or maybe not Rabat, but just Morocco. Or at such level, you put Rabat is bigger fonts. This kind of stuff. Everything is uh, can be customized. So that's really powerful, and that's done using a CSS-like mechanism. And um, what can be used for? Well, a few examples. Um, sorry. That's one of them. Um, here, it's not an incredible map. It's quite simple. But the thing is, using the same color as my, my, my site theme, which is nice. Same, same brown, same blue, same yellow here. So, well, 
it's no big deal. But when a, a customer is really insisting on having a map which does fit with the the uh, the site uh, theme, most part of the time it ends up with a flash or uh, just a fixed image, and it's a shame because it's much better to have a real map where you can zoom and pan and so on. Uh, so that's this can be done really quickly to to build something with so m few information is really quick. But if you're gifted, while well, you can do stuff like that, it's quite quite nice, or that gorgeous. See, uh, it's like an old map with all the fonts, really really nice. Uh, to do that with time is you can have some. You can put some image on the on the background. You can change the way the the strokes are performed and so on. It's, it's well, okay. It's not easy, but you can do it. This I already show it to you, and well, there are a lot more example. If you go to Mapbox or uh, or CloudMade, you will find some really nice example by people who are really gifted to produce uh, incredible maps like that, and that's that's lovely. So that's pretty much it. Thank you. So, any questions? Yes? Yes. You mean actual maps or, or plugins? This okay. So this is has nothing special to do with leaflet. It can be do. It can be used in um, modest map. It can be used in uh, leaflet, but also in open layers. You can do use this kind of stuff with open layers. So it's not specific to the JavaScript client you are using. But uh, yes, you are, you have some uh, online studio provided by CloudMate, for instance, and also uh, Mapbox. So people can create their own styles. They can duplicate an existing one, create their their own. Uh, it's free. If you're not using it too much, so there's a certain amount of uh, view per day which is uh, authorized, and it's not if you are using it massively. But yes, you can just check check that Mapbox CloudMade, it's just fantastic. Anything else? Yes. Oh, um, uh, no, you can. It, it can be. It, it can be automatized, of course, because Time is just a studio on top of it. But the underlying system is uh, is Mapnik. So basically, what you produce with Time Hill is a Mapnik style. A Mapnik style is an XML file defining lots of parameters. If you have this this um, this style somewhere, a Mapnik installed. So Mapnik can be installed. Uh, it's integrated. Uh, it's, it's nicely distributed. Uh, you can use it and produce the resulting ambitals. And using um, Landes, uh, with Landes is a really powerful tool where you can uh, put several ambitals together. So you can have uh, some um, layers, let's say. You can use an external service like external tiles or external WMS and merge it, make a fusion with something else. So you can produce tiles that way really efficiently. And it's all um, system commands, OK? Yes, absolutely. And um, a colleague of mine made um, a system to serve uh, to, to, to serve tiles from Django, but as it's Django, I'm, I'm not mentioning it. <laughs> <laughs> Any more question? No? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>